These are three shortish excerpts from my telling of the Odyssey. Please allow me to introduce myself. My name is Zeus. Father of gods and men, capo of capos, also known as Jove, after the Italian takeover of Greek culture. Later known is the entity formerly known as Jove, after the big Yahweh push. <laughs> you know this, this big god Yahweh, eh? Hey, don't want no false gods before him, or beside him, or behind him, or anywhere else for that matter. And eventually I was persuaded to enter the Hades retirement home for superannuated gods, which is where I spend most of my time these days, you know, apart from literary events like this. You know, I seem to have developed something of a literary character, which is a bit of a come down for an old lightning chucker like myself. But uh, hey, you know, you, you got to take what you can get in this world, and that goes for gods as much as it does for men. But look, I haven't come here today to bellyache about my sorry condition. I come to tell you about Odysseus. Now, Odysseus, he was a hero, much beloved of my little Goya, the bright-eyed goddess Athena. I think Athena saw in him the beginnings of a great civilization project. This was centuries before her great city of Athens burned with its undying intellectual light. Odysseus was a guy with space inside himself for the gods to express themselves. He was climbing out of savagery and barbarism in pretty much the same way as you people today are going back into it. <laughs> no, not that I mind, you know, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a bit of an old barbarian myself, but uh, Athena, she gets a bit depressed at what passes itself off as civilization these days, but no matter. At this particular point in time, Odysseus was sitting on the island of Calypso, pushing his toes through the sand. He looks towards Ithaca. He thinks about his beloved Penelope. He moans, he weeps, he mumbles, he speaks. So, here I am, and there you are. Now, as before, unreachable, absorbed by the threads you weave, subtle threads until there's nothing left you stay in my arms like smoke but then i see you in the firelight and your face is all gentle our son lies nearby you rub him with oil and he glistens in the firelight like a shining god. I'm bouncing up the palace walls. I'm going to take the great bow of Apollo and kill something. But I don't. I cross over to the palace gate and look out on the hillside of my birth. The evening is so still. Steady threads of smoke rising in their familiar pattern. The little hearts reflecting the great heart. And in their collected light, unimaginable distances are crossed every night. Husbands, wives, strangers meet. And these Subtle threads are woven together into a kingdom, and that's the only truth I know, and I want to go home. Odysseus 
spends 20 years wandering. Eventually, he stands outside the city gates of Ithaca, and no one recognizes him. He stood at the gate like a refugee, home from the wars and the wine-dark sea, with only his humanity, saying, help me please, I'm a refugee. Give me refuge in the hearth of Ithaca, the great wide hearth of Ithaca. In days gone by when hearts were mild And the cattle grazed peaceful on the mountainside The gods walked in and breezed around And so could any stranger from any foreign town They could take their ease, they could lay them down Safe in the heart of Ithaca the great white heart of Ithaca. My, what will he do with his one-eyed men? They would take his woman, they would kill his son. Push his face in the dust again and again. And lay waste the heart of Ithaca. The great white heart of Ithaca.